From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Wake up! What is up, everybody? It is Wake Up War Champ, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, Tallahassee, Florida. Coming up on today's show, Jared versus back? What? This is Axby's indescribably good player of the week, and Leonard Hamilton on his 600th win. I can't put an asterisk next to it with my words, but I am with my fingers and air quotes. Wake Up War Champ, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. That's in Tallahassee, Florida. CPTallyBar.com. That is the website. You know that. As always, you can pull out your phone, get on that barcode with your phone, cameras and boom takes you right to the website the qr code links you up you can check out the daily lunch specials today is the burger handcrafted fantastic burger made with angus beef you know all the sides straight fries curly fries tater tots fresh cooked potato chips side salad it's all there it's everything you want at the corner pocket bar and grill check them out thumbs up if you're listening to us on youtube subscribe to our youtube channel subscribe to warchant.com core they're not messing around it used to be a dollar for an entire year then it was like ten dollars then it was ten dollars till football season now it's only now it's 30 bucks 30 bucks from now until september 1st so that'll get you through the off season of gassing this team up rightfully but then after that you're, you're gonna be left in the dark so guys on, really jump on board yeah. hop on board now we gave you what did we give you a month at a dollar jeez and I then mean, we gave you three that. months at ten dollars now we got you for 30 but after that the price of business is going up so you got you don't have much time man come on get with it warchant.com go over there it's really easy to sign up you've done it before i'm sure on some other website come join us it's fun times we assure you of it all right, Corey, so a couple things to talk about on a Monday. It's the off season, some might call this. I don't know if an off season really ever existed and surely doesn't feel like it exists now with the transfer portal. Uh, we might even get into some kind of some recruiting stuff even towards the end of it. You and I just kicking some stuff around. But the news of Jared Verse returning, his plans to return to Florida State in 2023. I mean, we we talked about I think we did a good job hinting at it on, on Friday's show. No, I, I didn't want to put you too far out because I know – you say we're not a, a breaking news product, although mm. part of that part of me in the inside hurts when I hear you say that. Um, but I thought well, we did a good job of letting people War, know. War Chant breaks plenty of news. Okay, just, just want to make sure. I'm not saying War Chant doesn't okay. break news. I'm saying wake up War Chant. Mm. I, I think most people listen to us for the commentary, not the do 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 do. <laughs> just then they, they're not they're not really expecting that for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Man, you you you're like the guy from Police Academy. I'm trying to try the Persian Persian part counterpart of him, you know, broke version though. But anyhow, so uh, you know, I kind of teed you up on some of the stuff that we talked about on Friday. But now that we know it's for real, it's for certain. This sounds crazy. Part of me really wasn't going to change my perspective of what Florida State would be next year, whether he was going to stay or go. Because as we mentioned, just how good this offense is going to be. And in this day and age, good offense beats great defense. But, you know, I had a chance to really kind of enjoy it and, and what it will mean for them. Just for this defense to be one more year together, more cohesive. I know they lose Jamie, but man, to have a guy like that and we anticipate that he's going to be healthy for a full stretch and full go this time. That really is going to change, not drastically, but hopefully enough of this defense with a guy like him for 12 full weeks that we won't have as much griping from some of the uh, the folks in the cheap seats. Well, they'll they'll always be griping, but uh, that comes with the territory. But, uh, yeah, man, that it is a huge, huge uh, development. It is in my by far the biggest, other than Jordan Travis, it is by far the biggest development of the last six weeks for Florida State, including the bowl game. Like, um, Jared Verse is a, is a potential first-round pick. He is a NFL player. He is ready for the NFL physically, anyway. I think. I mean, he's got to get better. Everybody's got to get better. Dude, but I think he, he was mocked. I think he was mocked like a top fifteen pick this like seventy two hours ago. That's yeah, one of the guys. Uh, w- w- one of the guys that I follow on Twitter that I actually really respect. There's a lot of charlatans out there that call themselves NFL draft experts. Right. Uh, this dude isn't. Um, he said that I think Penn State has somebody coming back too. That. He, he said, it's crazy that two of my top 15 players in the draft are going back to school. He's like, it's awesome for college football, but uh, Jared Verse was one of them. Um, yeah, man, Jared Verse is not – he was going to be dra- he was going to be drafted. You know, we, we don't know, man. I think people around this time might have thought Jermaine Johnson 
was going to be a top 10 or top. I mean, I think people thought Jermaine Johnson might be a top 10 pick the night before the draft. Mm-hmm. And then he fell to 27th or whatever he did. So there's no way to know for sure. But we do know this. Uh, Jared Verse was going to get paid a substantial amount of money to play in the NFL next year. First round, second round, top 14 pick or top 29 pick. I mean, he was going to make a lot of money. Instead, he's coming back to Florida State. You have that on your roster now. You have Fabian Lovett still on your roster. And when you think about this team, Aslan, all of the experience. Like, it, it, what, what's cool about this team and, and the reason I wrote what I wrote, because it did it does change my, my thoughts on it. I mean, it, I, I think that you, you have two exceptionally talented players on offense and defense. I think you have the offensive preseason offensive player of the year in the conference and the preseason defensive player of the year in the conference. And surrounded the, surrounding them are all good college football players with a ton of experience. Like, I, jo- Johnny Wilson might not... And Johnny Wilson announced he was coming back, or I guess Battles End announced it, but, but Johnny Wilson's coming back for sure now. Brendan Gant, too. Don't forget BG. Yeah. Uh, BG, 2 eight. Let's go. I see you, Brendan Gant. Mm-hmm. So, um, you, you have guys like Johnny Wilson, Trey Benson, Jaheim Bell, uh, Winston Wright, Lawrence Toafili, uh, Tatum Bethune, Fabian Lovett, Guys like that on the D, uh, McClendon, you could throw him in there. I guess he he said uh, Battles End might yeah. have uh, announced mm-hmm. him too. Correct, they um, did. So he was the other defensive end that I guess people worry about. But when you when you think about these guys, Kalen Deloach, uh, Cypress, um, th- these are Fisk. These are good play Fisk. I mean, <laughs> these are good players. It's not like it's Jared Verse and ten dudes that can't play. It's not like it's Jordan Travis and ten dudes that can't play. They've got talent around them as well. You've got and, and what I've always what I've thought has been missing from Florida State. Well, there's been a lot of things missing from Florida State the last five or six years. Not a ton of special, not a ton of elite. Hmm. Well, now you have special and elite surrounded by pretty darn good. And that's a great combination, man. You have a dynamic defensive end that has to be game planned for that you can't typically block with one dude. And that that's going to help the secondary out because that is a question mark is is the back end and the safety position. If you're going to nitpick and think about what Florida State still needs, the safety position, Akeem Denton, Shaheen Brown, they they've had moments, sure, but you've lost a really good player in Jamie Robinson. And can can those guys pick up that slack? Is there somebody else out there you can go get? But man, it sure is easier to coach defense and play defense when you don't have to draw up pressure to affect the quarterback. You have a dude coming around the edge, two of them really, because don't forget 56, and you have Jared Verse on the other side, and if they're healthy, along with those two monsters in the middle, that's a very good defensive line, and that's going to make playing defense um, you know, you know, a lot easier, and it's going to make Florida State a lot harder to play against. You know, yeah. the, Don't you think? I mean, I just think you look at this team now, and you've got dynamic players, you've got NFL talent, surrounded by some really good college players who might not play in the NFL but are good at what they do here in a di- in an elite quarterback. That is a nice recipe to go into 2023 with. Yeah, you know, I think I saw like one of the first comments on YouTube was just like, "All right, Fuller's got no more excuses," which I don't know, maybe kind of a backhanded out for him because I do think when you look at the defense, like we like Jamie, we like Fabian, we like Jared, but Jared was hurt most of the season. Fabian wasn't available. Uh, you know, Patrick Payne was still a young pup. You know, Tatum Bethune gave you something better than what you had, but maybe not elite top end. And Kalen Deloach was kind of up and down. But then when you plug in Cypress, you bring in Fabian Lovett back, and he's just going to be that much more physically more mature than the guys he's lining up across. Jared Verse, hungry, money year, knowing for sure, all of these sort of things. That, like now we can really start talking about a defense that – is maybe a little bit closer talent-wise to the expectations that the fan base has for them. And I don't want to sound like a, a fuller apologist because I'm not. I, I get it. I, I want to hold teams to under 150 yards of offense every week too, but I, I watch enough college football to know that that doesn't really happen a lot. But to your point about kind of going through every sort of level of this defense, man, I mean, Fanchel Cypress, like the number one for a long time, was the number one overall prospect in the portal there. I mean, he's on your team now. He's going to plug into one of these roles on your back end, Fisk, and Fabian, and I don't know what's going on with Daryl Jackson. Maybe we should have probably got Michael Langston on to talk about that, but maybe he might actually return to Miami. But you got Fisk and you got Lovett, and then Malcolm raised some of your depth there. Uh, but and with Farmer. Jared, pardon? And Farmer, Josh yeah, Farmer. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. I don't talk about him enough. Thank you, Corey. Uh, 
But yeah, now, now you start thinking about all right. That is that is that that is probably much more along the lines of what you were hoping. Like in terms of what this defense is going to be able to produce. I know that that's probably a year behind what it, the offense was this year. I, I think not that they're going to be elite, but man, this this defense now has pieces that are good enough to get you enough stops with this offense to win you. I don't want to say all your football games, but all of your football games, Corey. What a time. Yeah, I mean, you know, stay healthy. Health, health is the most important thing. you got to have some injury luck. Um, but, yeah, it, you, you know, look, what would you say right now on paper looking at this team on this defense? What's the strength of the defense? What position group? Um, I mean, the front four, or are we talking about like you yep. want to go? Yeah, no, we, that's the answer. Okay. That's the answer. It was almost rhetorical, but I wanted to make sure we were on the same page. Yeah, I know if it's about tackles or ends, I don't know how close. No, no, we're just go. the front four. Yeah, the, that defensive line currently constructed. Now, granted, with, we said this going into 2020 with with Corey Durden well, and Marvin Wilson, everybody. So get off of our backs. We understand. Yeah, that's but. true. That's true. Um, I still don't. I, I just the Marvin Wilson thing was just. I I don't know. Now he's. I, I don't even think he plays football. I don't even know if he plays football. No, anymore. he does. He's, he's hanging on the Eagles. I think he's on a roster and everything. Oh, okay. Well, good yeah. for you, Marvin. Make yeah. it happen. Um, but when you look at that front four, that that is the strength of the defense um, by e- easily. Um, and you have. Two difference-making defensive ends. I think Pat. Look, man, Patrick Payton isn't anywhere close to what he's going to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's get he gets nine more months now to get bigger and better, uh, and he gets a whole year now with Jared Verse, another year. That's going to help in the long run, but it also helps in the short term. So now you have look. I I don't know that Derek McClendon's special. I mean, I think we can say that he's not, yeah. uh, but he's a serviceable, solid college football player. Jared Verse is special. Patrick Payton maybe could be special. So you have those two dynamic guys coming off the edge on third down, and you have, you know, we I guess we don't know for sure about Fisk until we see him at this level. But he was coveted; he was the he's he was the highest ranked guy in the portal, and I you mean, got him at defensive tackle. Notre Dame wanted him, Marcus yes. Freeman wanted him, Southern Cal wanted him. So we, we didn't pull him away from just Western Michigan; we pulled him away right. from Notre Dame. He is a Southern just Cal. like you know everybody wanted Verse, even yeah. though he was coming from Albany. Yeah. Um, th- th- this guy, along with Fabian Lovett, who you know what he is when he's healthy. That is a that is a powerful front four, man. That is a real deal front four. Um, and what's cool about it is you know, I mentioned Peyton already, and we mentioned Farmer. But you you've got these young guys waiting in the wings, the young bucks like Daniel Lyons and people like that. Um, that, that Malcolm Ray, we mentioned him. He he's again not, he's not special. I don't when I say Bishop nothing Thomas. special. It sound Bishop Thomas, sure, but when I say nothing special, it sounds dismissive. I don't mean it to me. I'm just saying they aren't. I don't think they're special college football players, but that doesn't mean they don't have a role. Malcolm mm-hmm. Ray, Derek McClendon, those guys have a role. Um, they are not going to be the stars, but they are going to give the stars rest. Yeah, and they are they are not going to be such a precipitous drop off, or they should not be. That when those guys do take breaks, that it's not falling off a cliff. Um, I you know because I think they're all going to get bigger and better, man. Um, to Fossey too, like those guys. Uh, no, let's. I, I'm just really excited now about that defensive line because you have the star power up front, mm-hmm. and you have those guys that get to teach the young guys how to play. They get to see it up close, what it looks like up close, uh, and I just think they're going to be. That's going to be the strength of the defense. And when that's the strength of your defense, you're always going to have a chance to have a good defense. Like the best thing. I don't know who the safeties are going to be at Florida State. Let's just say right now it's Akeem Dent and Shaheem Brown. Mm-hmm. Well, the best thing for those two dudes is Jared Verse coming back. And Fentrell Cypress guarding somebody. Green. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Green. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's just the best. When you have a front four that can create pressure and you don't have to you don't have to bring linebackers, you don't have to bring your nickel, uh, your, your nickel cover guy like you did with Jamie Robinson so much, you can just get pressure with that front four and you can stop the run with your front four. That, that changes the game, man. That changes the game. It should be the best defensive line that Florida State's had here in a good long while. And... That should, I mean, I, I just, Jared Verse coming back is an enormous deal. It is a big deal. And I think when you look at this roster, again, we have nine months to create all the hype we want to hype. There's no reason why this team can't have a special season in 2023. Again, other than injury luck, um, they, they are set up with a lot of, a lot of experience too, right, Aslan? Yep. yep. Like a ton of experience, a ton of dudes. I want to, I want to do like a projected depth chart. I might do that this week, actually. Um, a projected depth chart of what, what they have coming back, and how many college football games they've played. Because it is a ton. They, they, even when you look at the offensive line, you're probably you're going to be breaking in two new starters. Good chance those starters have started somewhere else. 
you're not breaking in a guy that has only one start in his career, zero starts in his career. Like, I don't know that there's a position on the field where you are doing that. Everybody on your football team Mm -hmm. in the starting 22 will have played a ton of football, and plenty of them will play in the league. It's and you might have a Heisman contender. You not you might you do have a Heisman contender at quarterback. It's setting up, man. I'm trying to. It's gonna be a long no, way. Dude. I'm not, I'm not gonna. Be a I'm not pulling you away. To get to I'm not pulling you away from that edge. Come on, come on to the edge. The no, water's I mean, fine. I just, come it's, on. I, I get, I'm getting really excited about I know, it. Like I think I everybody listening to this is, and it's like, oh yeah, we got nine months. Yeah, yeah. And also spring practice. I don't want any of those dudes coming out of bubble wrap. <laughs> Jordan Travis. I want the whole team wearing green jerseys. <laughs> Except for the third stringers, and I, I, all of them need to be wearing green jerseys in the spring. Corey's going to be running on the field if somebody hits the ground. Like, don't you, don't you let him fall Stay down. Stay up. Stay up. The clutch shots, the biggest hits. It's time for the Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. You heard the man. Time for the Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. Uh, and when you deal with basketball season, Corey, there's highs and lows even within the week. Florida State lost on Sunday, but they're still 15-3 and three on the year. They had a really impressive win earlier last week against Clemson where Miss Tania Latson, who just, I mean, golly, just have her mail forwarded to the podcast, everybody. She had 31 points in that contest, 7 of 16 from the floor, a perfect 15 of 15 from the stripe. It's indescribably efficient. It's it, it's that That's how indescribably good she has been this season for them, even despite the loss the other day, plus 23 as well. Uh, from Florida State, always doing good things when she's on the floor. Uh, Tania Latson, she's my pick for the Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. We'll probably hear her name quite often here in the next mm. two months. So buckle up, everybody. I think she, uh, I think she's made thirty six straight free throws, mm. which is uh, pretty pretty good. It's better than thirty five out of thirty six. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stay on the hardwood, but I'm gonna go to the other team, the team that's not having near the success of the women's team. But I'm gonna go with Darren Green Jr. Uh, nice. uh, the Knowles got themselves a, a a nice win over Georgia Tech. Um, on Saturday, uh, led comfortably in the second half by 20 points. My man was 0 for 5 in the first half against Georgia Tech zone, but he legitimately is one of the best shooters Florida State's ever had. He is just a pure shooter. He kept shooting. He finished, uh, I think, the second half 4 of 5 from 3 because when you're a shooter, trust me, I know, what you just shoot it. You shoot or shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, and he caught fire, scored 18 points in the second half um, as they as the Seminoles uh, I get proved a three and two in conference Aslan so they're they're still above 500 in conference even though they're five and 11 and they get Baba Miller back let's go so that's exciting that's exciting too but Darren Green jr I love the attitude I love the fact that he's still gonna pull even when he's struggling because he knows he's an awesome shooter and it's just a matter of time before they go in and they they started going in, in the second half Tania Latson, and Darren Green jr are Zaxby's indescribably good players of the week well let's segue right to basketball then as we showcase two great Seminoles for our Zaxby's and his probably good players of the week. Speaking of great, really great column by Corey up on wordchant.com about uh, the significance of Leonard Hamilton's, you know, 600th win. Uh, he has won more than that. He's won more than 400 at Florida State, but, you yeah. know, the NCAA does NCAA things. Uh, but for Florida State to bounce back and have a nice little run here to come out the new year, Corey, and they do get Baba back uh, when they resume play, uh, Hoping for the best for them this season, but we don't really need to kind of project how they're going to look the rest of the season with Baba back. But let's, I guess, maybe kind of reflect on what Leonard's meant to this program. I really like the column, man. And I mean, the quotes that you pulled out and from Leonard, just quintessential ham and him just talking about, you know, we judge him by wins and losses. Too many of us probably judge him by wins, wins and losses. But the amount of men, young dudes that have come to this program and become men under his watch I know for some people that sounds hokey, but for me it doesn't. Uh, and that's the, the coolest thing about having Leonard Hamilton as your head basketball coach. Uh, what were, you, what was kind of, the, what did you t- take away from Saturday's sort of, I don't want to call it landmark win from him, but that that uh, 600th official official win. The official 600th win and yeah. the official, uh, which is great, and the f- official 400th win at Florida State, which is there's only been four other a- ACC coaches that have won more games, which is uh, crazy. Yeah, man, it's just that, look, man, this is a bad year. I hate that his career is winding down with a season like this. Um, hopefully he's got another run in him. Uh, maybe this team kind of finds some magic with Baba. The the right guys come back next year and then make they can make one last run for Leonard because he's 74. I don't foresee him coaching until he's 80. But uh, the, the thing about Hamilton, and I think, number one, he's won enough that people can appreciate stories like this. Yep. It's not like we're saying – Winning doesn't matter. And as fact, that's what he said at the press conference afterwards. Like, look, it's how we keep our winnings important. It's how we keep our jobs. 
but you know, he's got another, he's got other uh, factors into his job than just winning games. And, you know, he talked about graduating since he's been here. There's only been two guys that haven't graduated that were here for the requisite number of years. Obviously Patrick Williams probably isn't getting his degree um, and he'll be all right. Same with Devin Vassell, but the guys that were here long enough, only two out of, I don't know, man, a hundred, 200, I have no idea, didn't get their degrees. And that matters to Leonard Hamilton. And that truly does. And I'll remember two quick stories about him that I didn't want to write in the column just because it would have taken too long. I remember when I asked him, Derwin Kitchen's final game at Florida State, his senior day, I asked him about uh, Derwin finally, he had some NCAA stuff too where he finally got cleared after like 10 games of one season. It was kind of like a Baba situation, I guess. I don't even remember it. But he finally got cleared to play and he had a weird path, man. Committed to Florida, then had to go to junior college, then came to Florida State, and his transcripts weren't right, so he was still on the sideline. He finally got to play, um, and Leonard was recounting that moment and like how when when Derwin finally got to play and his team his teammates found out that he was going to get to play, there was this big eruption. Everybody cheered. Everybody went crazy. And then two and a half years later, I'm asking Leonard about that moment, and he starts to tear up, like legitimately starts to tear up. Because he's thinking about Derwin and the story he had gone through to get to Florida State and just to get on the court. And then he's also thinking about the fact that the dude uh, was about to graduate. And that stuff matters to Leonard Hamilton, man. I just don't know how it's to say it. You, you, I know we roll our eyes a lot when it comes to off-the-field stuff and the coaches talk about raising great men and, and all that. It really does matter to Leonard Hamilton. Um, he, is, he is first and foremost a leader. Um, and then, you know, there was another story about a player that was here maybe five or six years ago from another country. And maybe he wasn't doing his best in the classroom. He wasn't going to class like Leonard Hamilton wanted him to go to class. And he started sitting him. And he was recounting this story to me. And he's like, how in the world am I supposed to talk to your mom and your sister and tell them that I'm doing the job I'm supposed to be doing, what they wanted me to do if they find out you're not going to class? And so he legitimately punishes them, not makes them run stadium steps. He misses games. And this is a very important player. Um, that, that, to me, always defines Leonard Hamilton, man. It, it just The class stuff matters. It's not just pass. It's not just stay eligible until you're, sto until you're done here and then go do what you want. He wants you to make use of your time at Florida State and get a degree. And I think every Florida State fan, whether you think he's a great coach or not, he's certainly been very good at Florida State. Everybody has faults. Leonard does, too. Got to hedge on the screen sometimes, Leonard. You don't just have to switch one through five every time when you got a 7-4 center, but that's all right. Um, the, the main overall overarching point is he has been a great ambassador for this school, and he really has he has put, he has made, he has had a, built a, a very good program, but it's been filled with good people, a, a program you could be proud of, and I think that's his everlasting, that's his legacy that will always be at Florida State no matter how his tenure uh, ends up. Well said, well said, and again, check out the column that Corey wrote over on warchant.com, uh, which was great because somebody on the boards was like, Ira, Corey, like, how come you guys aren't celebrating Ham more? And it was like 10 minutes. I think it was even after you wrote the column, and then Ira's oh. like, here's the column, and these guys, oh, thank you. It's like, yeah, well, we're on it. Go. We're on it over there here. Uh, shout out Matthew Cleveland. Second, yeah. well, I mean, how many doubles and doubles in a row is this for our five? Guy He's five. Uh, five. It's the first time a Florida State player's had five double doubles in a row since uh, Doug Edwards. Look at that. Back when Charlie was the point guard. Uh -huh. uh, Doug Edwards was a first round pick of the Hawks. Kind of yeah, a little bit of a bust, but that doesn't matter. He was very good in uh, he's very good in college. A little trivia about Doug Edwards. He was the uh, coming out of high school. He was the number two ranked player in the United States uh -oh. in most of the recruiting rankings. Number one was Kenny Anderson. Okay, thanks. And for number three me. was uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, and, and Doug Edwards was split right in between them. So, Whoops. Uh, I mean, look, hey, you know they but they all had very good college careers. It's just Shaq. Shaq maybe did a little better once uh, once they all started getting uh, paychecks. Oh, and yeah, and I wanted one. to say uh, also about Darren Green. He's uh, he's Brady's favorite player because he was Brady's uh, counselor at the uh, oh. at the Leonard Hamilton basketball camp. Was it and, was Devin Vassell his counselor one year? No. Uh, who was his MJ oh, MJ. Walker? MJ I, Walker was his counselor, uh, and he 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 struck up a relationship, a friendship with Raekwon Gray too. Okay, it's really cool to, with those two guys too, because I mean, look, man, they coach a bunch of. I think Brady was ten at the time, eleven at the time, and they they're, they're all faceless kids. They're just they're. I mean, they're not cashing a paycheck. They're having fun yeah. when they're there coaching those kids. But then they're they got they're college basketball players. They got other things. But when they saw Brady, both of them before a game, uh, they were warming up before a game. They saw Brady and uh. 
both like lit up. It's like, hey, what's up, man? And it wasn't because I don't think it was because he was my kid. I think it was because they remembered him from the camp and they and they, they remember they that shot with him. And they remember that shot. Them. Real recognize real Corey. They, they do. But and they were nice enough to let Brady uh, were, uh, practice before a game. Oh, Brady got to shoot around with him. Oh, man. That's and awesome. Raekwon, Raekwon just sent one into like the 11th row. Like Brady tried to like do a little one on one and then step back. And Raekwon just, sw- I mean, he's 6'9", and he's a college basketball, really good college basketball player. And he just swallowed it up and, and sent good. it to the ninth row, which I thought was, there you go, Brady. Humble. There's the difference. As we sit here, Corey, uh, Florida State, you know, right now atop the ACC is Clemson, actually. They're 5-0. and they're, they're undefeated yeah, in conference. How about that? Behind them is Miami and Pitt at 4-1. and one. And then there's a cluster. There's six teams at 3-2, and two, including the Florida State Seminoles. Yeah. They get Baba back. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the only path for them to do something to get into the dance in March is they're going to have to probably win the conference tournament. But yes, man, they're correct. it's it's a weird year in this conference right now, right? You know, uh, Duke is All not right, Aslan. Let's not go. Well, I know you what know, you're trying to say, but they they I, I just don't it's think worth watching. That. I'm going to break sure. my I'm going to break my silent protest. I'm going to start actually watching the games now. Now the Baba's back. I was. You know, oh, there you go. Nice show, showing the NCAA what's up by uh, you know sitting in silent protest with my guy. But, Every time you say "Baba" back, I think of "Baba Black Sheep," <laughs> "Baba Black Sheep." But "Baba Baba" is back. "Baba" is back. That's a. It's just crazy to say. Uh, yeah, man, I think they're going to be fun to watch down the stretch. Uh, but just projecting to what they could be next year, like I, you know, again, we'll see what Cleveland does. We'll see who comes back. They have some nice pieces. Um, they really do. That, that dunk by Worley on Saturday was, was crazy. It was an incredible dunk. Um, and, you know, they have some guys that could, could maybe make a difference coming back. And it'll be a good 16 games for, for Baba Miller. But as, as we've been told many times by people close to the program or in the program or Leonard himself, this isn't Kevin Durant necessarily. Like, this isn't a guy that's going to just completely flip the script and they're going to change they're going to, he's going to score 25 or 30 points a game. He's a very talented kid. He'll probably play in the league one day. He's never played anything close to this level of basketball. So it's going to be an adjustment for him. It's just going to be cool to watch him adjust over these final 16 games. He should have been using these first 16 games to adjust, mm. but he's you know apparently evil and took some money a couple of years ago to come to the States. And even though he paid it back, he had to sit out the first 16 games of the season. But I, I, I think it'll be cool. It'll be interesting to see how they adjust to him, but we have to keep these, the three and two record, you know, in the context of they're all three, all three wins were at home and two of them were over the two worst teams in the conference. I think in Notre Dame and Louisville and Georgia tech isn't much better. So it's not like they've beaten anybody of note. I think their most impressive game was probably at Virginia because yeah. they were close there. Yeah. But, you know, they got to play at Wake, and then they got to come home and play Virginia. So that 3-2 and two could be 3-4 and four real quick. It's just a matter of, of watching them uh, adjust. And we can't spend too much time with, with basketball. I, I did want to get back, though, real quick to football before we, will. we go. We will. We gotta, oh, okay. Well, let, I, can I, let me transition. Oh, I, 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 oh, I haven't transitioned before. I, nice. I felt That one felt good. Sorry. Because this is a kid that probably has played basketball in his life and could probably be a, at least a small forward on Florida State's team. But uh, Johnny Wilson – we kind of we kind of glossed over it and i don't think either one of us were really worried that he would go pro um after you know the but that bowl game was such that you're like well yeah the iron's hot you can go ahead and strike if you want but man again that guy you you have you have somebody that's unguardable and if he like if johnny wilson had decided to go to go to the league I don't know that it changes Florida State's win total. I, I don't know. I do know that on third, man, what a comfort blanket that is on third down or late in the game to have a guy like that that you can just throw it up to. And I was thinking about that um, when he when uh, it came across Twitter that he, w- that he was definitely coming back, is that, you know, the, J- Jameis Winston was incredible. The, the, throw, the, the most impressive throws I thought he made all of his freshman season were those darts to Kenny Shaw in the middle of the field. That's that's where great quarterbacks live. He made some incredible throws. He almost got Kenny Shaw to 1,000 yards. But, man, it sure was nice every now and again to just throw it up to big number one, right? Mm-hmm. Just the get-out-of-jail-free card. Like, oh, they got man-to-man out there. Let me just throw it up to that guy. Third and 10, third and 20. Um, just throw it up, see if we can change the game right here. 
that to me is what Johnny Wilson brings to you n- next year. You're going to have a lot of other dudes that are going to make plays. You got a bunch of skill guys coming back. I don't know that he gets to a thousand yards because you're just the ball is going to be shared a lot. But man, when it's late in the game and you need a first down or you go need a big play, I think especially after this year, Johnny Wilson has proven to Jordan Travis and to the the, the team, you know, throw it up to me more often than not. I'm going to make that play. Yeah, I'm going to drop a few. You're going to roll. You're going to get frustrated and scream obscenities. But more often than not, I'm going to make that big play. That again, that's just such an unbelievable comfort blanket for a quarterback to have to know that he can just throw it up to a big guy. Some might even call it a safety blanket. Is that it? Is that it? Is it safety com- is valve? That- I've never heard comfort blanket, but like yeah, I've heard blanket. Right. I know what you're going for like, like safety valve, but like I've never heard like comfort yeah, blanket. Yeah, comfort. A safety yeah, you're blanket. Right. You know, if it's safety, safety blanket. blanket. Is it a safety blanket? What is that? Isn't that, is that what like something that like when you EMTs watch the movies? Use? You watch the movies and the police show up, like and they put yeah. the blanket on somebody. That's not a comfort blanket. I don't know. I don't think so. I'm going to Google it. You talk about okay. Johnny Wilson. For a uh, yeah, some might actually argue that Johnny might be a bigger return than Jared. Uh, I might even take that position myself. I think you lose against Louisville if you don't have Johnny Wilson. I don't. I don't know if you beat Oklahoma if you don't have Johnny Wilson. Maybe you don't even beat Florida if you don't have Johnny Wilson. And I know he drop passes in those last two games that you could say that put them in situations that had them maybe losing the game. But ultimately, again, man, I just I will take dudes on the offense. Uh, that's where you're going to win your football games. We'll probably even see it later tonight when Georgia takes on TCU, uh, although maybe Georgia does a good job of clamping down TCU's offense, and we'll be like, oh, defense has made a back a return in 2023. But, yeah, probably glossed over a little bit too much. I think Johnny coming back is maybe even a bigger deal for Florida State uh, than Jared coming back. Maybe I meant security blanket. Security, there it is. All right, yeah, better. That's what I there meant. we go. I, th- now, when you no. Google comfort blanket, there's a lot of things that come up. You can apparently buy any kind you want on Amazon. Oh, nice. um, but security blanket so is, is obviously what I meant, guys. You knew, you knew yeah. what I meant. Come on. Uh, I would disagree. I, Jared versus a bigger deal. Johnny, but Johnny Wilson's uh, very close. Um, that That is, that just because... You're always going to have a mismatch in every game you go into as long as he's healthy. Like that guy is out there and they have to game plan for him and shift coverage over to him. And oh, now you, you know, now you've got whoever you've got over there uh, Malik McLean, Winston Wright, Portier, Micah Pittman, all those other, Jaheim Bell, all those other guys will take advantage of the coverage having to roll over to 14. There is a reason that Kenny Shaw and Rashad Green seem to be open a lot in the middle of the field. It's because safeties had to go with number one because number one flipped and changed everything. Yeah. Tight ends and, are also going to profit from this. Yes. Yeah, exactly right. And so I, I just, um, it's that, that is, that's a really, really big deal, man. I, I, I'm, uh, it, it's cool that he's coming back again. We thought he was, but you now have other than pokey and Trey Sean, but both of those guys, and they, they made they had big plays. They Shout made out big Trey plays. Shaw. I think he was at Kansas State this past weekend. Visiting. He was. I don't think he's committed yet, but that's oh. cool that he was on a visit. K State's a real program, yeah, man. man. Good for you, Trey Shaw. Deuce Vaughn's for... gone, so maybe he kind of slips in that yeah, undersized, right. scrappy dog underdog role for them. So. Yeah, um, I, I think that uh, you you have you're bringing so much of your production back, and you're getting the addition of Jaheim Bell um, and, and more lot and Winston Wright for that matter. I mean, it's just yeah. your your offense um, with, with those running backs, with, with your tight ends, and now with your receivers, and, oh, yeah, the quarterback that's awesome. Th- th- your offense is going to be one of the best in the country. Johnny Wilson just kind of cemented that. Mm. Like, you would have had a question mark. Like, the 2014 team really missed Kelvin Benjamin, and I know that's a no-duh. No, duh, Corey. Of course they did. But I, I think I've said this on the podcast before, but I, I don't remember. But I remember talking to Jimbo after uh, uh, a spring practice in 2014. And I'm like, man, because he, he talked about, I think Cam Irving had come back and somebody else had come back. And I'm like, man, if only you could have gotten uh, Kelvin Benjamin to come. I, said, I think I said Benjamin and Jernigan. Mm. If only you gotten those two guys to come back. And I said it jokingly. Yeah. He's like, let me tell you. If number one had come back, I'd go put all my money. I'd go to Vegas and put all my money on us to repeat. Oh, like, that's how important yeah. Kelvin Benjamin was to what they were doing. And again, he's a 6'6 dude that could run. Mm. Uh, he was, he's, a, he's, he's a little different athlete than Johnny Wilson. But, man, Johnny Wilson isn't a slow poke. No. And when you watch him get off the line of scrimmage, whether you're bumping him or not, his hips move in a way where he gets free of coverage. It's not just I'm running even, throw it up to me. He gets behind these guys. He's fast enough. 
He's not Kelvin Benjamin fast, but he's fast enough, and he goes and makes those contested catches, and it's just, again, what a security blanket mm. to be able to throw that bad boy up on third down and 10 or under pressure to just get rid of it so you don't take the sack. You're like, oh, I can't take the sack. Let me just throw it up to where I know Johnny Wilson is in the area, and maybe we get a first down out of this. Like, it's just, it's a, it's a, um, that's that, that, what a weekend, man. It's a, that was a really, really, really good weekend for Florida State football um, to get guys like that, two guys that both would have been drafted, one maybe in the first round, but Johnny Wilson certainly would have been drafted at somewhere. Um, both of those guys coming back to make a run at something special, and I don't think you need to – And I, that's one other thing I wanted to point out, man. Don't shy away from these expectations, mm, no, no fans. No, sir. You're 10-3. and three. You, you were you, – you, you know, you're, you're coming off a 10-win season – you're going to finish near the top 10. You're bringing almost everybody back that mattered. Of course, you're not going to bring everybody back. Nobody does. The 2013 team didn't bring everybody back. So you're not bringing everybody back, but you're bringing most everybody back. You've got a favorable enough schedule. Embrace these expectations, man. You have a great offense, an elite quarterback, and you have some real talent on defense, a solid defense, and you could. There, there's no reason you can't go win 11 or 12 games next year. Just embrace it, man. But don't be scared. Don't shy away from it. This uh, this is going to be a really, really good... It is set up to be a very, very good college football team in 2023. Corey's talking like we're done. Wait till he finds out that we're not done. Uh, uh -oh. But you guys need to go to my bookie. Get your New Year start off on the right foot. Whether you're going to bet to win some money or you just want to bet to make things extra interesting, you can do it over at mybookie.ag and use that promo code WARCHANT. You'll get an instant cash... Bonus, which, you know, helps you get even better odds and better payouts, and you can get your payments in and out at the drop of a hat over at mybookie.ag. Right now, as we sit here, the national title game, the Georgia Bulldogs, the defending reigning national champs, favored by 13 and a half. Uh, there's all sorts of different props you can use over at mybookie. I don't know. I was so confident Georgia was going to hammer TCU, but as we sit here, I almost think like maybe they'll keep it close-ish. Um, but I don't know. I think... I. I'm going to stick with it, though. So where are you at right now as we go into the national title game, Corey? Are you going to still stay with Georgia to cover 13 and a half? No, I think, I'll, I, I, I think I'd take TCU in the points. Okay, It's a lot of points. Yes, uh, he is. is a good quarterback. They can move the ball. That's a tough offense to stop. And if you've been paying attention to Georgia, they haven't been stopping a lot of uh, good offenses lately. Um, LSU threw for, I think, uh, what LSU threw for? 400 yards, 500 yards against them? Something crazy. And then, um, and then obviously Ohio State put up over forty on them. So yeah, I think I think Georgia will win the game because I think they're better. Uh, they're, they certainly have a more talented roster, and they have a good quarterback too and a good offense too. But yeah, I think I think it'll be close. I think it'll be a game in the fourth quarter. Yeah, check it out. They got first quarter lines as well at the half, and, and all sorts of different alternate lines and spreads that you can use uh, to get your night. You know, a little bit more interesting. It's all over at mybookie.ag. Use that promo code WARCHAN. And don't forget, now that the season's pretty much over, uh, they're going to have futures out there. And we can talk about Florida State's odds on that. So over at mybookie.ag, use the promo code WARCHAN. All right, Corey, last thing. Uh, I know you, you did such an eloquent job about talking about embracing expectations, so maybe we'll close out with that. But Florida State did get another piece, perhaps, of their puzzle or at least in a, a need address. They got a, a walk-on, a preferred walk-on yeah. to agree to come here. I think he's been at Eastern Tennessee. I want to say Tyler Keltner. He's a native Tallahassean. Uh, he was Child, all SoCon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was all SoCon, uh, two-time first-team all SoCon, one-time uh, second-teamer. He's made 56 field goals, perfect on his PATs, has a career long of 54, uh, made 78% of his field goals in 2021. In 2022, he hit 74%, 85% inside of 50, 90% of his field goals inside of 40. Now he's preferred walk-on. Mm -hmm. uh, so awesome that he would agree to come here and, and compete for the job, and Brian Fitzgerald's going to have to embrace the competition. When we were s going to practice and watching you know, through the, the middle part of the season where the kicking woes were really in focus, there just wasn't a lot of – I you know stone cold iron pipe locks behind Ryan Fitzgerald to where I know a lot of people were frustrated by seeing him going out there, but it was like, hey man, we're at practice. He's actually making better. He's making most of his field goals. It, it might be one period of one day where somebody outperformed, but now you seem to bring a guy on campus that might be able to consistently outperform Ryan Fitzgerald or at least get him to perform better. So at the very least, you feel like kicker. I don't want to say he's fully addressed, 
but you're going to get improved production or at least consistency out of it when you bring in a guy like into this into your position room. So that's another thing to, to kind of keep in mind this offseason as we project ahead. And look, man, if he beats out Fitzgerald and wins the job, Ryan, your last kick was a game winner in a bowl game. Hmm. You know what I mean? Hey, that's a good way to go out, right? Yeah. Um, look, that, that it, I think that just shows you how how much they feel like this might be setting up for something, that, a real run. And they're not leaving any stone unturned. Because look, man, um, it's cool that he made that kick. It's cool that he got better near the end of the year. But Ryan Fitzgerald is not an elite kicker. Not Certainly not an elite college kicker. Um, as opposed to what, Corey? An elite middle school kicker? He'd be incredible for a middle school kicker. Um, he... When you're trying to win something of note, when you're trying to win a championship, you need to be better than what he was this year, right? Yeah. Um, you, you know, you just have to. And and if it me if he wins the job, he'll have earned the job because this kid can really kick, man. He's yeah, he, I think he's fifty six out of seventy one in his career. Like you said, he's made ninety percent under forty. Um, this past season, yeah, this, yeah, but in his career, I think he's made in his career, I think he's made ninety percent or forty. And he's he's been doing it for four years. Like he's a, I think he's a COVID senior, so he kicked in 18, 19, 20, or he kicked in 19, 20, 21, and twenty two. Yeah, yeah. Um, now it's East Tennessee State. It's not quite the stakes that he'd be playing with here, but it's just good to know you have another leg out there that can give him some real competition because I don't think we thought there was a lot of real competition. This year, at Florida. it didn't look to me, and in practice anyway, like you would look at that guy and go, "Yeah, absolutely." Right, right. There, there just wasn't. Now, I think there is. A uh, little trivia about uh, East Tennessee State: it's where uh, Jeff Cameron went I and know. played one year yeah. of uh, football as yeah. a scholarship athlete. That's right. That's right. Before, uh, I guess, I think he got hurt, and then was like, "What am I doing here?" and left, and then uh, I think he went on a like a, a walkabout for a year or something, just kind of, and then went and enrolled in Florida State and the a rest gap of the year. Gap year, so I think what they call gap it Gap year, yeah, between Etsu and uh, FSU. That's what the kids <laughs> Etsu, call it, by the way, yeah. Etsu. Yeah. Um, also, it's Johnson City, Tennessee, which is mentioned in that, uh, what's that country song? The uh, Johnson's, it's... Uh, who, Johnny it, Cash, I've Been Everywhere? No, it's the old Crow Medicine Show, then Darius oh. Rucker covered it. Oh, it's, Wagon Wheel? Wagon Wheel? Yeah, Wagon Wheel. All it's right. mentioned in Wagon Wheel, Okay. Johnson City, Tennessee. Randy uh, Sanders where, went there uh, after Jimbo left. That's right, and there. it's also where Steve Spurrier was born and raised. Oh, right. So there's all your Johnson City of trivia for our man. Uh, I think Spurrier Tyler, was Tyler Keltner. I think Spurrier was born in Miami. He might okay, be raised well, in Johnson City. high school in Johnson City, yeah. Tennessee. Yeah, I think that. Um, I think we piece it. So together. either way, I don't know. There's, that's way too much trivia on Johnson City, Tennessee. But we we did it for you guys. But yeah, I think again when I saw that, I'm like, absolutely. Mike is not playing around. Uh, they they cannot lose a championship because they don't have. I, they can't man, bleed look, the man, clock out and kick a field goal from 42 yards out to win a, a conference correct. championship. Correct. Yeah. You wouldn't – yes, correct. And what, what I what I brought up in uh, – and look, man, I know 54-yarders, 53-yarders aren't – they're not automatic. They're not something that you assume you're going to make. Clearly, look at Ohio State. But there were two, two misses that Fitzgerald had at the end of the year, one at Syracuse and then one in the bowl game, where uh, he couldn't get it there from like 52 to 54 yards. That's not normal anymore. Not in 2023 now. Kickers at, at these kind of schools, schools that are playing for championships, they have the leg where they don't have to kick a crazy line drive to just get it there from 52 yards. Yeah. And I'm not saying that, I mean, I mean, we know Fitzgerald does have a nice, a, a, a decent leg. We've seen it on kickoffs. But on field goals, it, he just, he, he's, not, he's not elite. He's probably never going to be elite. The only way to get him to be good, even because he's not good, he was he's not been good the last two years, um, is probably competition and practice because there's real pressure in practice, Re because he knows it's not just his job. Like if he doesn't perform well on, on August nineteenth and August twenty first and twenty third, he might not be kicking against LSU. I don't think that was ever in question um, this past season, and I think that kind of pressure is good for kickers. So at nothing else, you got him. Uh, you you got him some. Uh, some real competition, so he can get, so, so you can find out who the better kicker is under those kind of under that kind of pressure. Because there's a chance you might be playing in a game this next year, where the the margin of error is so small. But if you win the game, you're going to the playoff, or you're winning a championship. 
and you have to have a you, you, you're going to want a kicker that can you can count on to make a kick. Um, you're not going to be good enough that this is not like 1993 Florida State where you can just slop through a season without a very good kicker because you're so good everywhere else. And by the way, shout out Scott Bentley. He he made the game winner. Mm. But he was not good that year. He got benched. He couldn't make extra points. It was nuts. You need some consistency at kicker. You need a good kicker because you might be playing for something real in 2023. Mm. So cover all your bases. Get yourself another security blanket. Yeah, That's exactly what this kid is, man. It's a security blanket. Um, he it, It's a good thing to have a kid that's got this kind of success um, at the college level, on your roster, just in case you need them. And then last thing. All right. Oh, Athlon man. Sports dropped their way too early top 25 for 2023 on Saturday. And this did factor in the return of Jared Verse. I think Jared coming back is what spurred them to do this. They're like, well, hey, we got it. We got it figured out now. We can make our list. We were waiting for this. Georgia's one, Michigan two, Ohio State three, Southern Cal four, Bama five, Florida State six. Mm. So LSU in there? Seventh. Oh, boy. We're talking about the greatest opener of all time, eh, Train? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The GOAT number two. Yeah. Um, so and you I got, saw you got Bre- Kirby, Harbaugh, Ryan Day, Lincoln Riley, Nick yep. Saban, Mike Norvell. Yeah, man. You know, so like you, you and, talk about and, maybe they should be higher. It's like it's – be 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 thankful. Like he is now, he's he's looking at real estate in that neighborhood. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's what it's about more than anything right now. It's like those the teams in front of them. It's because those head coaches have proven themselves to make the playoffs. But you're you're around the cusp of it there, which is you know. And I saw um, Brett McMurphy on Twitter. I don't I don't can't remember who he works for anymore. Maybe like Stadium. Action Sports. Like, yeah, Action what Stadium. Yeah, yeah. We'll call uh, yeah. So, uh, but he had he really and this was before Verse. Oh. This was Saturday morning. He released his too early top twenty three, and he had Florida State fourth. Oh. So you're, okay. you're talking about some real, real hype surrounding this team, and that's another thing we'll talk about. We don't have to talk about it this show, no, but we no. will certainly talk about the next nine months is how this team handles this. But yeah, the the because of the way they finished, because of who they have coming back, because of what they did in the portal, um, they they are going to be one of the uh, one of the prominent picks to to make the playoff or challenge for a playoff spot. And um and yeah, there that that that's what happens when you bring most of your good players back and you just won ten games. And so much of it is quarterback too, right? Like those oh, those yes. teams you mentioned yeah. ahead of Florida State, other than USC. None of them have a proven quarterback. Yeah, I mean, like, I, don't, I don't think J.J. McCarthy is. Yeah, I mean, J.J. McCarthy's proven, but oh yeah, not that's like true. A great, yeah. great. Yeah, I, I I forgot about him. So he, yeah. but he started. He started for a playoff team. Uh, he threw you know a bunch of touchdowns to his own team and the other <laughs> team. But he he's a good player. He's a nice player. So, but uh, you know, Georgia, like I pointed out, Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson, they don't have proven commodities at quarterback. No. You do. That's a that's such a luxury, man, to go along with not just a, a proven commodity with no talent around them. Like you've got real good college football talent around them. It's uh, yeah, man. It's uh, it's it's fun. It's exciting. We're I'm not saying Florida State is back, but you can you can kind of see back out in the distance. Mm-hmm. And depending on what they do, you know, in the next uh, well, this time next year, we'll see how we're talking about this program. Yeah. All right, that's a wrap for us uh, by the Jeff Cameron Show coming up on the 3 o'clock on our YouTube channel, War Chant TV, which is totally free to subscribe to. So a shout-out to the 35,000 of you now that are subscribed mm. to our YouTube channel. We've made it over 35,000. Uh, hit the thumbs up. That would certainly be cool. Maybe a recruiting shout with Michael Langston coming up this week. Uh, but we'll do two more shows at minimum for you guys and gals uh, this week as well. Corey also will be writing what needs to be written whenever there's something mm. to write about over at WarChant.com as well as Ira's got Henshaw's houses up on the site. Uh, I don't. I wonder if we get a three-two-one out of him now with Jared Verse coming back. Maybe we get a sort of, sort of preseason, off-season three-two-one out of our guy. But Amen. plenty of stuff over at WarChant.com. Remember, you sign up now. It's only thirty dollars. It'll take you all the way up until. Uh, September 1st. So it's like usually $100 for a year. You're pretty much getting nine months for 30. So mm. I don't know. Do the math. Value. There's value in that, but don't and wait. And spring practice is coming up. Yeah. And we get to watch it. Yeah. So we can give you all the updates on the on the new guys and how good they are. And you can believe us because we are right about just about everything we told you in August. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just saying. So you're going to want that inside info. Uh, so sign up. For Corey, I am Aslan. Thank you for listening to Wake Up War Champ, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.